Hello once again, my friends. I want to welcome you to another video, and I'm going to feature another vintage model kit for you guys to check out. Now, recently I posted a history video. Um, I did the history of the USS Enterprise, CVN 65. And if you want to check that out, I'll put the link in the description. And what I like to do is if I have a rarer kit or a kit with a special subject, I like to do a video um, where I do the history. Now what I do is I research the video and I write probably a two or three page paper and then I narrate it and then I, co I uh, put the, uh, the photos and some video that I could find to line up with my narration. And I've done a bunch of videos so far like that, including the Titanic, the Mauritania, the Mayflower, and I actually did a playlist of just um, history of famous ships. So today, what I want to show you is, since in light of the USS Enterprise history video that I did to you, or for you, I want to show you the model kit of the same vessel. This is the CVN-65 aircraft carrier, USS Enterprise. And this is an Otaki kit. This is a vintage kit, um, so it's been around a while. I believe it's from the early 70s, but I'll put up an exact date for you in the video. And you can see it comes in a red box. Now keep in mind this box is old, so it's a little, little stained and a little weathered. But the from what I understand, this came in a couple different colors. The red indicated the motorized version of the kit, which is this one is. And I think a green or a different colored box represented a kit that was not motorized. So you can see the, the only labeling on it is a sticker. You see a nice illustration of the Enterprise. You can see, um, I'm not able to, I don't know if this is Chinese or Japanese, but you can see what's written in writing is Otaki Plastic Model, world's largest atomic aircraft carrier, USS Enterprise, CVN, CVA 65. One 400 scale, and this is kit number OTI 47. And I don't see a date. It could be written, I'm not sure. But that's what's on the front of the box. And the only other place where there is any kind of markings is on the sides. So I'm gonna show you the side of the box. It's kind of the same label. And it is the same thing on the other side. Let me show you guys the other side. So, and there's nothing on the back. So that being said, why don't we take it over to the modeling desk and I'll open it up and I'll show you guys what this model comes with. All right, we get it over to the desk and this is a pretty large model kit. The Enterprise, at the time, she was the largest aircraft carrier ever built. And she was 1,123 feet long and 257 feet wide. So this is one 400 scale. So this model kit is <laughs> very large. So let's get the box open. All right. So first thing I notice when we look in, we have a lot, a lot of plastic. So I see the first bag has a parts tree. It looks like planes on it. Nice. Check it out. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on a detail for you. I'm not sure what these jet fighters are. You can see it's got the the wings, the main wings, and the wings that go on a tail fin. And I'm not sure if that's the landing gear or not. 
we'll see when we look at the instructions. And it looks like there's two of these. Yeah, this looks like it's the same exact uh, parts tree. So it looks like you have six planes. So you got the fuselage, the wings, and in this section you have the smaller wings, the tail wings, and what could be the landing gear. So that was a small tree. Let's see what else we got. This tree it looks a little larger, but this tree seems to have parts missing from it. Yeah, there looks to be quite a few missing parts from this tree. Let's see, this would be, you can see that, Enterprise. You can see some of these, I'm not sure what these are. They look like, not propellers, but again, I'll have to look at the instructions sheet to see what these are, and what they're for. But there's not a lot on this tree, so it looks like there's parts missing. So let's see what else we got. It looks like we have another plane tree. There's some jets. These look a little larger. You can see, it looks like a little fighter jet. This looks like it could be those larger planes with the big radars on them, you know, the big round circle that's on top of them. I'm not quite sure. What I'll do is I'll, I'll look it up and I'll put it on a screen because I don't uh, really know a lot about the military jets. You can see the bottoms. And that could be that big, I don't know if it's radar. It looks like it would go on that plane. And you have some... Uh, Looks like a crane or a hitch down on that side. And look, it looks like a little little vehicle, maybe to taxi the planes along. I'm not sure. And it looks like the other parts tree is, it looks to be the same thing. Yeah, and it looks like there's a plane missing. So hopefully we have uh, all the pieces somewhere as I was told that this kit was intact. Again, you can see another one of the that plane, and I think that's that big round thing that goes on top. I'm not sure if it's radar, and you have a small propeller, which is probably for the helicopter, and you see the fuselage right there, and the fighter jets. This is gonna be a really fun kit to make. Um, it's gonna be fun detailing out all these little planes. All right, what else do we got? We got another parts tree. I'm not sure what this is. You can see the 65. I wonder if this is part of the, the island. You can see, looks like the, uh, the windows. Near the bridge area. And yeah, this looks like it could be the uh, the island. And I'm not sure what this, maybe it, uh, I'm not sure what that is. We'll know more when we look at the instructions. So that's that part's tree, let's see. This one has two parts trees. And for being a vintage kit, this um, this kit's really in good condition. From what I've seen, a lot of the parts are on the tree. You can see <clears throat> the propellers. Of course, the Enterprise had five propellers with five blade. Uh, excuse me, four propellers with five blades on each one. I'm not sure what this is. This is nice solid plastic too. You can feel it's really rugged. 
Um, this is the first model that I ever really have of the Enterprise, of the CVN 65 Enterprise, that is. And this, the pieces are very, they feel very solid, nice and thick. You can see, looks like there's a couple pieces missing on this tree as well. But considering this thing is from the 1970s and you know it's been traveled all the way around the world by the writing on the box, it's in pretty good condition. All right, we got another one, another package. And we have, it looks like two trees in here. Looks like they're tangled. I don't know what those are. This looks like more like little detail pieces. I'm not sure what these are. You can see over here. And down here, a little, little, little circles. They look like little pulleys. Again, I'm not sure what that's for. I don't know if that's going to be for the planes or parts of the ship. But let's put this one aside and the other one. You can see this one has railings. And again, looks like there's a couple of pieces missing. You get a lot of smaller detail pieces. I'm not sure what the round things are. You can see maybe these are cranes or hoists. You can see that. I'm not sure what that is. Again, considering the time period that these are from, the, uh, the detail is pretty nice on these. And I'm not seeing a lot of flash flash and like there's a little bit over there that need to be trimmed off but for the most part all the small pieces pretty crisp pretty clean let's see what else do we have it looks like we go into the deck now remember the the main deck the flight deck on this ship was over four and a half acres big <laughs> so this is a huge area you can see the the six five. In raised plastic. So that would make it a little bit easier to paint. And you have the arrow directing. And you have the flight uh, these look like the catapults where the planes would go on to be launched. All right, let's see, there's another section. You can see the runway. This one looks like it's angled. Now this, what, this aircraft carrier, what was unique about it is planes could both take off and land simultaneously. So the volume of planes being in the air could be very high, especially if they needed it for an assault or an attack or for defense. You can see the runway, kind of raised. Hope that shows up on the camera. So, looks like we have one more piece of the, uh, the flight deck. Maybe this is a big piece. You can see the runway and the raised parts. Let's see if there's a writing on the back. I don't see any writing at all. This is a big piece too. Very, 
very solid piece of plastic. Nice. I don't know how I'd go about painting that though, the raised area. Well, I'd want to paint her just like she is in the photographs of the actual ship. You know, not nothing against the artist rendering, but I'd rather model it after the actual photographs of the real ship. Um, what else is in here? I see, well, like I told you guys, this is motorized. So let's see, this, oh, there's a, that's an old piece of wiring. And let's see, looks like one, six, maybe six C batteries if I'm sizing it up correctly. Or maybe six D, I'm not sure. That'll put some weight in the bottom of the ship. You can see the wires that are coming out to wire it. I don't know if it's gonna to go to a switch. We'll go right to the motors. But this is the power pack. Uh, let's see, what's this? All right, this looks like a bag that, this is probably what was missing from the trees. After that, you see that plane that was missing. You see the detail on that little guy. Let me show you guys the flight deck where it would land. You can see. Follow the. I mean, this is one four hundred scale. So, it's one of the planes. Let's see what else we got in here. Looks like a larger piece. I'm not quite sure what that is. Looks a little more detailed on that side. So this is a larger piece, you know, from when I was showing you the tree that had all those pieces missing. And what is this? It looks like somebody could have actually started this model. It looks like there's glue. At one time it was glued to something. Uh, I don't think this is one piece. Could be, but I don't think it is. Anyway, I'm not sure what that is. Let's see what else is in this little bag. Uh, we have, this looks bowed or rounded. I don't know if it was made that way or if it was just because of age. But you can see it's got a little bit of glue on it. So I'm not sure if somebody tried to start it. The kit doesn't look like it was started, but these pieces do have some, uh, it appears to be glue residue on it. See like this? Not quite sure what that part could be. But these parts are big, so they'd be noticeably missing from the trees that I showed you guys. And again, this looks like it's two pieces. I don't think it would have been molded that way. I could be wrong. There's a lot of steel in this big girl. She displaced, I think it was 93,500 tons. That's, that's a big girl. Oh, and what we have, it looks like we have, looks like a little lifeboat. And looks like it's got glue residue on top. So this would have to be cleaned off and painted.
And let's see, it looks like we have, these two look the same, I'm not sure what these are. You can see, but these look like the same and it looks like they have glue on them. So, I'm not sure what that is. I'm glad I found this bag though, because it's, uh, there are a lot of parts in here. And let's see. Looks like another lifeboat. A cute little lifeboat. Well, this is one 400 scale. So this little boat could probably be 100 feet long. <laughs> or I mean, probably not that big. Maybe about 25 or 30 feet long. That's a pretty big boat. Now uh, let's see, there's another lifeboat. And again, it looks like it's been glued. A little bit smaller. Now you get something that has almost 6,000 men on it. I would think there'd be more lifeboats than one, two, three. This is only the fourth lifeboat. You'd think there'd be more with so many people aboard. There's another lifeboat. And there's really not too much else in, oh, it looks like an anchor. I don't know if you guys can see the anchor. Oh, I'm presuming that's the anchor. So, oh, looks like there's a tiny little life raft amongst these very, very small pieces. Yeah, you can see it looks like a life raft or a tiny little lifeboat. And the rest in here are really, really small pieces. They look like some rounded parts, a boxy looking part, and some tiny little, little pieces that could have fallen off the tree, so. Uh, what else is in here? Looks like we have the, the base and what appears to be the name tag. What I want to get first is the nameplate. This is interesting because it's, it's, um, it's all done. I mean, it's pretty old. And the gold would need to be touched up, but you can see it's it's all finished. CVAN 65 Enterprise 1400. That's in gold lettering. The raised part is all painted. So that would need a little bit of touching up. Probably over the years, all the parts rubbing together. So what else is in this? It looks like part of the base. I don't know if that would be to cradle the ship, cradle the hull, or that goes on the bottom of the base. And you can see there some gold parts, pretty nice parts. Let's see, what does that say? Stand. So you got the little bases and you got the little columns. And I wonder if that goes on like that. So that's pretty nice. Let's see, and the last thing in this bag. Uh, this is probably for the nameplate. So I'm not sure if it gets glued on to the base. It probably goes on like that or like that maybe. And it could be on its own, just freestanding. But that's the base. <clears throat> Let's see, what else do we have in here? Looks like that brings us to the hull. 
Look at the size of this baby. Oh, it looks like somebody already started to drill out where the, uh, the propellers are going to go. That's okay, that can be sanded smooth before it's painted. Look at this big baby. Nice. It appears to be a solid hull. Um, I don't think it was in two parts. It, it could have been. It could have been glued together, but I don't think so. I think this was a solid mold. Because you look on the inside and there are no lines. And you can see where it looked like the motors will go in that little trench. And where the propellers would stick out. And let's see, that's probably where the battery power pack is going to go. And I don't see any writing in the hull. I'm trying to look for a date. But I don't really see one. You know, like Polar Lights, AMT, Revell, they, let, they always have stamps on the larger parts. Um, this doesn't. Again, this is an Otaki model kit. I've never had an Otaki model kit. Um, I'm not even sure if they're still in existence. They could have done an upgrade to this kit. I'm not sure. Let me show you guys the other side, or the starboard side. Uh, looks like somebody put the anchor on. That's weird. Why would you put the anchor on before doing anything else? Unless the instructions called for it. You can see that beautiful bow. This is a really, really huge ship. Now the Titanic was over 80, uh, excuse me, 840 feet long. And this thing is 1,120. 100. 1,123 feet long. Think about it. This thing is more than 300 feet bigger than a Titanic. And you know how huge the Titanic would be. So that kind of gives you a scale of how absolutely enormous this vessel is. You can see some of the detail, some of the windows around the hull. I'm going to show you guys the bottom. I'm thinking that's where the rudders are going to go. Again, a little bit of sanding, some primer. It's going to be gorgeous. show you the, the inside of the hull. Again, this model is very large. It's over three feet anyway. Well, one four hundred scale. Now, it, it's amazing. If, if this is one four hundred scale and this is this large, can you imagine what a one two hundred trumpeter version of this kit would be? Because I know trumpeter makes aircraft carriers. I'm not sure if they make the Enterprise. That would be really, really cool to see. The thing's got to be five feet long, <laughs> you know, or over five feet if you think about it. But this is a really, really nice hull. Very solid, well molded, well detailed. Hopefully it'll go together well. because I haven't even been able to find a video on this kit, Otaki. At least not this particular kit. So hopefully this video will be like a pioneering video so people can actually see this model. I'll show you the other side. Or the port side.
He just seems to go on forever, huh? <laughs> Beautiful. This is going to be a really fun kit to make. All right, let's see what else we got in this kit. Um, all right, so this bag seems to have all the metal parts. Um, appears to have the motors. Let's take a look inside here. Ooh, right off the bat, you can see a couple of the propellers. I'm not sure why. See, these propellers, um, the Enterprise had four propellers and they had five blades on each one. And these each have two. Uh, they have two, but they have three fan blades, excuse me. So I know it's motorized, so they're probably just gonna, just so it spins so it can move and have something to hook up the, uh, the motors to. So that's two of those, and there's only two of them, but there is, I don't know what these, these could be, these could be the pieces that the shafts go into, the propeller shafts. So let me take one, let's see if that's what, uh, So that goes in like that, yeah, and I can spin. So that's what that is, it's a shaft for the propeller shaft. And there's a couple of uh, long, I'm really not sure what these would be for, but there's two of them. Again, when we see the instructions, it'll, I'm not really sure what these are for. There's one, and there's two. Again, I'm not really sure what that would be used for. And this is probably for the rudder, I'm thinking. And I hope that's not one of the missing parts, because I don't remember seeing a rudder. Um, looks like it comes with an alum wrench as well. All right, let's get uh, these motors out here. Jeez, look at that, it looks brand new. This is an old vintage kit, so let's see if you can hear it. Let's see if there's any made in Taiwan. And let me see if I can get the, any more information off the front for you. I'm not quite sure what that says. Hoping to get some voltage for you, but. All right, let's show you guys the other one. This kit anyway came with two of them. And since there are two rudders, uh, excuse me, two propellers that are made out of brass, I'm thinking that there's only two, not four. You can see. Again, I'm not sure. I can't. It says 280 on there. I'm not really sure what that says. And again, it's in pretty good shape. Doesn't look like it's ever been used. All right, what else is in this bag? Um, there's a couple of smaller. It looks like there's a couple of screws. There's a bolt, and yeah, it looks like a 
I'm not sure what these are. Something goes in there. You can see that's probably what the Allen wrench is for. A couple of screws. And there's two of those. And let's see, I'm not sure what this is. Could be a switch. I'm not sure if that's a switch or not. Could be a switch. A weird looking switch, I'm not sure. Again, we'll have to look at the instructions. And that other one of those um, things is in here. That two. Let's see. Let's get the screws in it. So that could hold a propeller shaft to the motor. I'm not sure. And as far as everything else in the bag, it's just um, a couple of screws, a couple of washers. That's it. And that's it. That's every everything. Let's see. Looks like the instruction sheet and what appears to be the decal sheet. I don't know if you can see the 65. And nice, look at the, uh, the logos that go on the planes. Tiny little details for the, for the planes. And at NK, I'm not sure what that is going to be. Let's see Otaki models, 1400. Enterprise, you could see more of the little. You know what? Let me take it out of the. Uh, take it out of the plastic. It might be easier to show you with no glare. because that was stapled. That's probably the original packaging that it came in. All right, so let's get this out of the plastic. I'll show you better where you can see the 65. Now that will go at the end. Let me show you guys if I can find it. Yeah, that will go with the bow section. You can see the 65. And the 65 would go right there. I don't know. I don't know if I would... I don't know how good these decals are going to be because these are old. It might be better looking if I paint it. It's for the plane, um, markings for the planes and the jets. I might not have a choice. That would be awful small to, kind of <laughs> to, to try to paint. And I'm not sure what those triangles are. It looks like they could go on the, the tail wings, the tail fins, or on the wings, I'm not sure. And you can see it looks like the stripes that would go on the runway. You have more of the markings. Not sure if there are any markings for the side of the bow. I don't see any in a box either. You know, the Navy usually puts the number of the ship on the bow, on the side of the bow. Is it different for aircraft carriers? Because they got it on the island, uh, but I don't see it on the side of the ship on the bow. So that's the decal sheet. Again, it's in remarkable condition, considering this is from the, the 70s. Again, those planes are going to be really, really fun. All these little details to put on. They're going to look, end up looking great. 
All right, one of my favorite parts of the model. Let's get to these instructions. All right, one four hundred. USS Enterprise, CVAN 65, the Enterprise, Otaki plastic model. It gives a telephone number. Again, I don't know if they're in existence anymore. Um, I'm not sure if that's a date. It's got the same picture on the side. And again, it's written in Japanese or Chinese. So let's get right into this. Looks like it's a little bit deteriorated. And we got the parts tree. Again, it's in Chinese. And again, I'd like to read them to you, but I don't understand the language, and there's really nothing in English. You can see the, the writing underneath the parts list to make sure that everything is there. So it's, it's great that they do a parts list. So this is an old kit, and I'm sure there's, it's not very often that you would get everything in a kit this old, especially that's been around the world and probably taken apart and by taken apart I mean taken out of the box and looked at. You can see the trees and this is the parts for the, uh, the mechanics. Looks like there's glue. I don't know if that's glue or it could be lubrication. A couple of screws. And it looks like we finally go into the instructions. Part one would be the uh, the jet fighter planes. You can see that little truck that I showed you guys. It's got a little winch that goes on it. Now is the other one. And again, this is the aircraft. It shows how the aircraft goes together. You can see the uh, the helicopter, with the landing gear. And we start to see, yeah, those little cylindrical things with the screws on it, it was for the uh, the motor, where you would tighten the shaft of the propeller shaft and actually connect it to the motor so it would spin. You can see the alum wrench. And you can see where the rudder is gonna go. Again, I'm gonna have to go back and look at this stuff in the trees. I don't think uh, I seen the rudder. And that's an important piece to be missing. You can see what it's gonna look like, how they want it to be wired. I guess that thing that I showed you is a switch going from the power pack to the motors. And the wiring of the power pack. And let's see, this would be, it's that, uh, those spring, those thin metal pieces. Again, I'm not sure what that's going to be for. Let's see the pieces, it's, it's showing the deck, the flight deck complete. And put it on to the hull already. And on the bottom, it shows you the motors, and it shows you a diagram of what it's supposed to look like, the power pack. And it looks like it's attached to the motors. You can see the power pack, I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna to look to see if there's an English version of these instructions. 
or an updated version. <clears throat> and if there is, I'll put them in the video. You can see, going over to shows you how to cut some of the pieces off the tree and some of the panels. And then it shows you the anchors going on. And down here, it looks like the lifeboats. They actually look like they're being, you're supposed to mount them on top of each other. And you can see the smaller lifeboat, it looks like a davit that it's gonna go up against. So it's like a compartment for all the lifeboats. That's interesting. You got more of the sides, uh, the box type structures. And the aft end of the ship, that's what it looks like. Nice. And it's not in English, but they did a good job in illustrating the steps. The lifeboat would go. So far, I only see one lifeboat like that anyway. So there's five lifeboats that I've seen so far in the instructions. And in such a large ship, it doesn't seem like that would be a lot of lifeboats. And you can see the, the construction of the flight deck. And the support for the, for the flight deck. shows you more what those little pieces are for. Now the bottom part, there's a shaded area of the, the whole ship and shows you what part that they're required to go to. This would be the forward port side. This would be midship on the port side. And the uh, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. That would be the aft end, the starboard side. Midship starboard side and the uh, starboard side of the bow. As you can see the runway and the numbers. More of the little intricate, intricate pieces. Let's see. We're up to step 24 already. And I was wondering when we were gonna to get to the island. It looks like part 25, or step 25, is the formation of the island. Part 26 and uh, step, excuse me, step 26 and step 27. It says C. I don't know if that's for the color code. If that's from the parts tree. Looks like another structure that goes on the island. You can see the formation. The round sections. And looks like the mast. Doesn't look like this ship has a whole lot of rigging on it. It does have a lot of the radar communication systems. Looks like the completion of the island, step 34. Got a lot of little parts that go on that section. Step 35, it looks like we go and do, well, that looks like the part that holds the, uh, the shafts for the propellers. And the add-on of the rudders. And you can see the formation of the base. 
So it looks like the hull rests on these tree looking structures. Step 38, finishing off. Looks like the elevators. I'm not sure. And then the, finally the final assembly would be step 39. You can see where everything kind of goes together. Attached to the hull, the island, the base. And let's see. You can see, I think that's the... Shows you where all the decals are supposed to go. I'm not 100% positive on that. But, again, in the decals, there's no flags uh, for her rigging. I had noticed. And on the back, it shows you the placement of all the planes. And again, if this is early 70s, I want to say 74, but again, I'll put the date up of the actual date this was released. And we have to do the time period where you want to do, because don't forget, she was, she served for over 50 years. So when she was first serving the jets, the technology of the planes was far different than when she was serving in 2012. The difference between 1961 and 2012 in the technology Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. And those are the planes, the placements. So that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Like I said, this is going to be a really fun kit. And those are the instructions. And does it give a kit number? If I see a kit number, I'll put it up for you guys. But those are the instructions. And again, I don't see any flags on the decal sheet. Um, there are the stripes for the flight deck, the runways. You see Enterprise. Are those flags? I can't really tell what those are. I don't think those are flags. Looks like they're markings for the plane. But I don't see any flags. And as you can see on um, the island, she has a lot of flags. But, like I said, this is gonna be a really fun model kit to make. For the most part, it looks like everything is here for this model kit, this vintage model kit. And again, this is gonna be really fun. And a little bit of primer, sand down the lines the mold lines, sand down the back where the, uh, where the propellers are going to come out. It might be interesting to make it motorized just to say it's motorized, but it's not like I'm ever going to bring it out and put it in the water, so um, I don't have to worry about it leaking or anything. You can see she's going to be a pretty good sized model. Well, I'll tell you what, let me, I have a small tape measure that I keep here just for this purpose. So from the bow to the stern, just over 32 and a half inches. And let's see, at the widest point, it looks like seven and a half inches at the widest point so this is a pretty good sized model kit you're going to need somewhere to display it uh, she's pretty big again it'd be amazing to see one of those one 200 scale trumpeter model kits but my friends this is the USS Enterprise this is the CVN 65 the first nuclear powered aircraft carrier that was part of the first nuclear powered task force. And she's an impressive ship. I'm glad she's on our side, or was on our side. I know they've gone even bigger than this. I think it's the Nimitz class, um, where these things just are enormous. But this is the Enterprise that she would have been in the early 70s. 
guys can see the, the illustration of her on the box. And this is the Otaki. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video, this vintage model of the Otaki 1400 scale USS Enterprise CVAN 65. This is in 1400 scale. And until my next video, my friends, I'll be talking to you very soon. Have a great day.